Welcome to Tough Crowd. Baghdad is a mess. The electricity is still out. The director of Iraq's power company was robbed of the country's wiring. Then he got robbed of the emergency wiring. Then the truck he drove the wiring in got stolen. Looting, carjacking, shooting at each other. Hey, these guys act like they've been a uh, democracy their whole life over there. <laughs> I'll tell you what we have to do. We have to start shooting them or the law-abiding Iraqis will turn on us. Because they're not Americans. They don't worship criminals. They're from a country where you can count the criminals on one hand. Because that's all they have. One hand. <laughs> because some people need structure. That's how it is. They can't handle freedom. Bobby Brown, after he left New Edition, he went crazy, right? <laughs> Justin Timberlake, when he was under the iron thumb of that fat Lou Pearlman, he minded his big P's and Q's. Now he's like hanging out with rappers, people are playing practical jokes on him, he's turned into a damn joke. You know? Uh, now the Shiites today, 10,000 strong, marched through Baghdad saying we want the U.S. out of our country, we want our own country back. That's great, fellas. How about just a couple of signs that say we want to rule ourselves, but thank you for liberating us from the guy that tortured and killed us for being Shiites in the past 12 years! Yeah! somebody to thank U.S. once in a while. Is that so unhip around the world? <laughs> now get a load of this. Get a load of that stuff. <laughs> Former New York Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick has gone to Baghdad to assist with the crackdown on looters. Now if we come down on looters earlier, of course, every, if we shot any looters, the whole world would say, oh look at those Nazis over there shooting. <laughs> so we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. Sarah, do you agree with this? I mean, I do, but I mean, we can't even stop looters here. You know, we have stuff to loot. <laughs> Can you imagine if, like, they had the NBA championships there? It would be crazy. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, who knew they had that much stuff worth stealing? They're, like, running around, like, ooh, I got an old sandal. I down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt bad for the guy. I saw some guys carrying a door. They're going, hey, we got a door. Now all we're going to do is build a house around it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think that they, uh, you know, the, the, they got the, the police chief. They yeah. get rid of him because he's gonna bring. Yeah, he's gonna bring all his buddies from New York there. They're gonna be harassing the Iraqi citizens, pulling out the car, grabbing stuff. What's this we got here? Is this a weapon of mass destruction? He got here. <laughs> you gotta get rid of him, man. You know, we we tried. We tried to have a plan in place to deal with it, but uh, there were a lot of things that came up that we didn't predict. You know, we got into. Uh, we took Baghdad too quickly, so they didn't get their infrastructure in place. And then things like carjackings. I mean, you know. They they didn't expect car jackson so we didn't know there were black guys in uh, iraq <laughs> how long do we got to go between hey. rifle off a of dog on black what the hell is that his toy poodle haircut is really pissing me off <laughs> why you gotta go that way homie let me uh, tell you something i heard what you did to dennis leary and the poor guy he didn't graduate harvard like you you know <laughs> anyway it's a different show <laughs> Are you, is anybody booked at that uh, Alibaba's Nights or whatever in, in Iraq? I got that gig. <laughs> I, got, I, don't know if they, I better not have hecklers. Looters is one thing. You know what? I think... Uh I, I think that it is a tough situation over there because, like you said, we're damned if, you, if, if we stop, if we, they say shoot the looters now, if we shoot yeah. the looters, yeah, but if you shoot the looters, then you're going to create more hostility. If you don't, I think maybe we should just shoot all the Iraqis shoot. and start over. <laughs> no, shoot the people who shoot the looters. Yeah. What about, like, the, the fact, shooters. I think we, we're doing a bully move, man, that's what I think it is, that we're taking that country over and we shouldn't take that damn country over. We're doing an old school bully move where we're like, hey, man, let me borrow your country for a few minutes, I'll give it right back to you. <laughs> Like in the schoolyard with basketball? <laughs> <laughs> the Americans are so aggressive, too. It's like the English, they knew how to do it. They did. They would do it with such sophistication, they didn't realize what they were doing. Jeffrey, would you care for some sherry before we go raping and pillaging? <laughs> <laughs> I know, America's like the boyfriend that like beats up the girlfriend and then goes right away and is like, I'm sorry, baby, you're so pretty. You know? <laughs> well, you're saying all this, but let's face the facts. The fact is he was torturing and killing all these... Shiites and all these different types of people over there, Sunnis and Shiites. So, I mean, they're crying with a loaf of bread under their arm. They, uh, you know, they're complaining. <laughs> Good but meanwhile, God. before this, they're getting tortured, raped, kids getting raped in front of their parents. This is what really happens there. 5,000 people starving to death every month. Starving to death. So, I mean, the realistic thing is bully. I don't know how that's a bully. Maybe we have mixed motives to be over there, but let's face it, it's the best thing that ever happened to them. 5,000 people starving to death and hundreds of thousands of people, like, snackish. <laughs> Let me go for just like a little, little, little bistle. 
That was, that was funny. Now, wait a minute. That was damn good. That was funny. And I'm not a laugher. That was funny. <laughs> Now live. listen, what about this? In <laughs> Lebanon, this is true, a hot new video game for the kids, brought to you by Hezbollah, which it simulates attacking the Israeli military and gives you 10 points for shooting Ariel Sharon in the head. And it's, I don't know what it's called, Grand Theft Infidel. I'm not sure. All right. I'm working, folks. Come on. Um, it's not just the Playstations either. This is what kills me. Even the new TV show, they got one where they chase the Mossad Jews clues. I don't know. Is anybody... I am working here. But look, what do you think? How are we supposed to get them when they... These kids so early, they're already, you know... That video game, it's like all video games. The, you know, the Israelis are symbolic. You know, they don't say just kill Israelis. They, they could be Jews from any country. Ah, That's true. I That's a good point. <laughs> they make it clear. <laughs> but don't you think it's so psychotic that if kid, you know, if you're trained yeah. that way, what are you going to do? I mean... You know, it seems like we're going to have to uh, really start clamping down on everybody. I think it's wrong to shoot Jews. <laughs> Don't wait. Yes, yeah. I do. I think it's, it's, it's crazy. That's why he's edgy. <laughs> this guy's <Sarah>. crazy. <laughs> At least they're learning computers, these kids. <laughs> That's reassuring. What are they? Aren't they? Don't they live in caves? <laughs> no, that's the Afghans. That's <laughs> Afghanistan. Oh, right. I keep up, but only once every, like, six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just ask you this question. Don't you, I mean, don't you think that even this comment, even the fact that we question our country this much and wonder what we're doing in Iraq, it's a joke. Because everybody can always find out what's wrong with America, but the rest of the world is psychotic. We may have a few issues. The rest of the world is stark raving mad. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> well, it just seems to me like, ah, oh, you know, we, everything about our country is speculative possible motives, right? Very few actual facts of what we're up to that's evil. Anybody else, you have their facts right in front of you. Well, uh, yeah, I agree with you too, in a sense, but we, when you're talking about, you know, they went over there and they wanted to, they protected the oil. They made sure they protected right. the damn oil. Right. They left everything else to go to hell. So, you know, it's, but what I'm do saying, you But even that could be justified by the people. Now, let me ask you both something. Being Baghdad and you guys are both from Philly, which do you think has more <laughs> desolation and awful burnt out buildings? Baghdad <laughs> or Philly? Because I've been to Philly many times and it's very depressing. Well, what for part me. of Baghdad? What part of Philly? What part of Baghdad? <laughs> All right, look. Uh, folks, I don't want to go back on medication. Please don't leave me alone with these people. We'll be right back. Boy, this is where we choose some of the stories from the news that I find interesting, and I toss them out and see what happens, okay? First of all, China is executing SARS victims that violate the quarantine. Greg, why is that funny to you? And I'll tell you something. I don't know, Colin. <laughs> that is a funny picture. And they have so many people, they look for excuses to kill them. Firstborn child, you know, Falun Gong, SARS. It's like anybody is wasting it. That's why they work so hard over there, because if you look like you're... You have to have busy work, or they'll just kill you just for hanging out. What do we think, Sarah? Well, I mean, they're crazy over there, you know? I mean, they'll, they throw baby girls in a dumpster, and they don't even have SARS. All they have is vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> they're guilty of having vaginas. Maybe they should wash them first. That's what I'm saying. Oh. He's just throwing an idea. I meant the vaginas. Yes, not the baby girls. <laughs> I don't <laughs> What a relief. <laughs> okay, look at this. Now you got an albino advocacy group, I said that, is complaining about the albino villains in the Matrix. Now, albino villains is like the last, you know, group. And there aren't enough of them to really protest. And even if they march on Washington, they'd like burn like ants under a microscope, you know? <laughs> but what do you think about this, Dom? Well, I, I just think I, it's good to see that Nelson's got a gig again, you know? <laughs> I saw that movie, by the way. Have you ever seen it? Have you seen it? No. So bad. Ask me a question. Uh, how was it? You know how it was, Colin. The prophecy is now. Oh. That's all it was. Like, I don't know what that meant, but that's the whole movie. <laughs> the thing is, who gives a damn about them? Who gives a damn? Now, honest, I hate them, too. I'm glad you said that. There's no... <laughs> what? But I'm saying there's no movie execs shaking in their boots. Oh, hell, we done pissed off the albinos now. I thought we were going to... There's too much political correctness. It's, all, it's also uh, wrong. I mean, I, I think it is insulting. It's easy to say because you're not an albino. If you're an albino, I mean, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong for them to always be depicted in movies as these evil freaks because we know that in reality, most albinos use their magic powers for good. <laughs> that's, that's what 
<laughs> Bush's media handlers asked the crowd members behind the president during his tax cut speech, take off their ties so they'd be like loosened up. You know, like that was going to make people think, hey, we're right down to earth. Like, why don't you just get the uh, unemployed cast of Les Miserables stand behind you now? <laughs> Greg? Well, it's, you know, they, it, it was a smart move because the Republicans, they don't want to be seen as a party that only cares about rich white guys in suits and ties. They also care about, about rich white guys in suits and a nice open neck shirt. <laughs> well, you, you know what? They should make them wear what every poor person wears, a $450 throwback jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you know that's a lot of this. <laughs> it's show business, though. I mean, look at Colin. He's got his own TV show. He probably has a million bucks. And, he, you know, he dresses like a slob to appeal to the common man with yeah. anybody who knows him. Anyone who knows Colin knows that he gets chauffeured around by a Bentley. He's doing caviar, doing shots yeah. of blow off of a $5,000 hooker's bass crack. <laughs> <laughs> Not every day, but as a treat sometimes. And I don't do it for <laughs> I don't do it for me. I do it for the people. <laughs> but, you know, the, the reality is that that's all politics is. It's all posturing and, and I mean with all due respect to the president, his whole image of being this this this, this Texas rancher guy, you know, I mean he grew up, he was a he was a, a diplomat's kid. He's a you know, he was, wasp, yeah. he, he was a wasp, but he was a, he was a cheerleader in prep school. I mean he's really less of a he was cowboy. A cheerleader? Yeah, he was a cheerleader in prep school. He's less of a cowboy than the guy in the village people. He was a cheerleader. <laughs> he's more like the cowboy in the village people. More like that. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of a half a would be a cheerleader? <laughs> <laughs> Gym teachers are applying for grants to buy expensive exercise equipment with video games attached yeah. to it to try to motivate the kids. What about this little thing, huh, Keith? Uh, well, I think, you know, that's not going to motivate them. They're just going to play the game on the damn uh, machine before even trying to work it. I think they should do what that gym, that other teacher did, take him to a strip bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, uh, he was a damn good teacher. He had some decoms. <laughs> You know, it is. There's a lot of. I might take my girlfriend to Disneyland because she's 14. She loves the rides, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to walk anywhere. She's so lazy. Uh, come on, I'm kidding. I never took her to Disneyland. It's not, it's not allowed out that way. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Disneyland, man. It was oh. good. Oh, what about the big Barbara Walters Hillary Clinton interview coming up? That should be a. Uh, oh, nobody gives it today. I can't wait. <laughs> That's gonna be a big. Well, maybe she won for prize. Should be a sincerity fest, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Hillary's as sincere as a lap dance, and Barbara's like, uh, you know, I don't know, as deep as uh, an airport self-help book. It takes a village. <laughs> nobody gives a damn. You're right. You're not <laughs> you should have listened to me. You know what? When you say nobody gives a damn, you really mean it, don't you? <laughs> Well, I think it's quite interesting. <laughs> Best story. What's your bent on it? What's that? What's your bent on it? My take is like this. She's going to go for the Democratic. Bush got a throw Cheney aside and get a woman VP. Maybe uh, the lady that ran over her husband that time and killed her. I don't know. Somebody that people know that they identify with. How about an Iraqi lesbian woman? Well, what about... Cheney has a lesbian daughter. Yeah. Really? She's not Iraqi, I don't think. <laughs> What about Dr. Finish. Germ? I think Dr. Germ was kind of legitimate to be a lesbian. You know Dr. Germ? Do I? But you have to. <laughs> <laughs> and how? <laughs> and how? <laughs> when we come right back, <laughs> Sarah will help me turn over my new leaf. I got a strategy for this stupid business.